All right, we're going to get started here. Um, good morning, and welcome, everybody, and thank you for being here on this wonderful, beautiful day. Uh, my name is Dylan Voorhees. I'm the Clean Energy Director with the Natural Resources Council of Maine. We've been waiting for that plane to come over, and so it's right on cue. As you know, last night the City Council of South Portland cast a historic vote by overwhelming majority to pass the Clear Skies Ordinance, an ordinance that will block the loading of tar sands and crude oil onto tanker vessels in the city of South Portland and prohibit the construction of dirty and polluting infrastructure related to that purpose. We are gathered here this morning to talk about uh, that victory, to celebrate it, uh, and talk about the meaning that it has uh, within South Portland and also the broader context uh, for this uh, really historic uh, tar sands victory. Uh, at the heart of the matter is a uh, 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 concern about construction of uh, dirty new infrastructure related to loading of tar sands onto tankers, uh, smokestacks, air pollution, toxic chemicals that would uh, threaten and harm the health and well-being of the citizens of South Portland. And at the heart of this uh, achievement are, of course, the residents of South Portland themselves. Uh, last night's victory was the culmination of more than a year of effort um, and at the heart of that is the, the community itself and the residents of South Portland who've come together to uh, enact uh, the vision that they have for their city and to protect it against uh, threats from tar sands and air pollution. And they did so against all odds. Uh, and that's, of course, part of the context we want to talk about here today. And uh, the conservation groups, along with the residents of South Portland here today, um, are really excited and, and overjoyed by uh, the decision last night. And we're not going away. Uh, the threat of tar sands has many faces, uh, not just here, but in many places. The community has been strengthened. The citizens are, uh, remain here, and all of us remain to make sure that um, this victory uh, is sustained. The meaning of this ordinance also has broader implications beyond the boundaries of South Portland. And so we're here to talk a little bit about what this uh, decision and this victory, uh, what it means in a broader context, in the context of, of tar sands, uh, and, and the various threats that communities face from it. Um, I want to uh, introduce briefly um, our speakers uh, today, and, um, and then I'll, I'll let them come up and, uh, and we can do questions at the end. Um, we're going to have um, Taryn Hallweaver uh, from Environment Maine, Andy Jones from the Toxics Action Center, Sarah Lachance from 350 Maine, and Ivy Frignoka from the Conservation Law Foundation. Um, Starting us off before all of those, it's really my great honor and, and privilege to represent on behalf of Protect South Portland um, and all of the uh, citizens who've really done all of the yeoman's work to make this possible, uh, MJ Farrier uh, from South Portland. Good morning. Uh, we of South Portland have every right to be proud of our city today. <laughs> Together we've done a big job. We're protecting our community's health and welfare. It's been a very, very long haul. No question about that. And not, literally hundreds have worked for hours and hours and hours to get to this place where we are now. Our city council has been tremendous. First of all, in appointing uh, a top flight draft ordinance committee, uh, which has come through with this masterful ordinance, and then by uh, carrying it through the process right to the end 
uh, until last night's vote. So there are lots and lots of people to thank for what happened last night. But isn't that part of what democracy is really all about? A community working together can do amazing things. Last night's vote in support of the Clear Skies Ordinance is good for South Portland, that's for sure. But beyond that, this is a signal to all people who oppose Big Oil's plans to come into their cities, their communities, with plans hatched in their boardrooms to bring tar sands through, risking their air, their water, the safety of their homes and their businesses. It's a signal that it is no longer business as usual for them. Ordinary citizens working together can call them to account, and we are here to witness to that. So speaking for South Portland today, I think I can safely so protect South Portland today. I think I can safely say that all of us are both exhilarated and exhausted. Yeah. And that's great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, good morning. This is a really good morning. Uh, we've got clear skies today and we've just uh, secured clear skies for the future thanks to South Portland City Council passing the clear skies ordinance last night. Um, this is a really big deal. It's a really big victory and it's not an everyday or average victory. This is a victory of citizen organizing. A tremendous feat for citizen organizing over the biggest industry in the entire world. From day one, this effort has been led by citizens who found out about the tar sands threat to their community and cared enough to stand up and talk to their neighbors and knock on doors and talk to strangers and attend meetings and do what was right for their community. And from day one, the oil industry has led a massively funded top-down campaign paid for by the American Petroleum Institute, the Washington DC based lobbying arm of the oil industry. They've done a good job, but not a good enough job, of spending a ton of money. They spent three quarters of a million dollars this past fall, and since then have taken out countless full page ads and mailers, and they did a good job of hiding the role of big oil, lining up um, front groups. They, they manufactured and played up economic concerns, and they denied tar sands plans over and over again. But the public of South Portland did their homework the City Council of South Portland did their homework and knew that it wasn't an abstract threat. Tar Sands is coming to Montreal for the first time ever as soon as this summer. There are a number of proposals bringing Tar Sands in. It's a major victory that we are able to stop it here and protect this community. Because too often decisions like these to bring Tar Sands through a community underrepresent or completely ignore the threats to local to local people, to local businesses, to people who live all along pipeline routes, who live by extraction sources, who live in refineries. And the fact that South Portland exercised its home rule authority to say, no, these local impacts matter and this is not okay, is a very big deal for communities facing these impacts everywhere. It's not okay for South Portland, it's not okay for Nebraska or Alberta, and this sends a powerful message. Um, thank you very, very much. Um, huge, huge, huge victory for Protect South Portland and all of South Portland and citizen organizing. Uh, hi, my name is Andy Jones. I'm with Toxics Action Center and we work side by side with communities to clean up and prevent toxic pollution. Uh, this victory is the culmination of a year and a half of some of the most impressive citizen activism the state of Maine has ever seen. Since early last year, Toxics Action Center has been working side by side with Protect South Portland to address resident concerns about air pollution and quality of life. I am proud to have been a part of the community campaign to prevent the construction of a tar sands terminal in Casco Bay. To be clear, Toxics Action Center would assist residents fighting this dangerous proposal in any town. But I am from South Portland, so this victory has a special meaning for me. It means that my friends, neighbors, and family members will be protected from toxic air pollution. 
Bulk loading tar sands onto tankers would have increased air pollution, including toxic air pollutants, both on South Portland's waterfront and at the city's oil storage tank facilities near elementary schools, the high school and athletic fields, the community center, and many homes. The smokestacks would emit volatile organic compounds and hazardous air pollutants like benzene, a known human carcinogen linked to cancer during the loading process. In addition, the new 70-foot smokestacks would have been the tallest in the city, placed near Bug Light, Willard Beach, Fisherman's Point, and the Greenbelt Walkway. They would have harmed scenic views and property values, public access to the waterfront, and recreational activities at city parks, beaches, and open spaces, ultimately bringing a new heavy industrial activity to a mixed-use area. South Portland has said aloud and clear that these impacts aren't what we want for our city's future. This hasn't been an easy fight. Powerful oil interests spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to stir up fear and confusion in our city. They continue to run dishonest newspaper ads in an attempt to undermine support for the ordinance. But despite the best efforts of the oil lobbyists, South Portland stood up and said no to a dangerous tar sands proposal. We are charting our own path for our future. We are looking forward to clean air and a beautiful, livable community. My name is Sarah Lachance. I'm with 350 Maine. What a day. On behalf of 350 Maine, I want to thank all the people of South Portland that played any part in this historic effort. To watch this unfold was such a wonderful pleasure that I got to take part in, to see real democratic process play out for the last year and a half, grassroots movement and organizing at its best, watching the people of South Portland go door to door, have potluck after potluck after potluck after potluck, <laughs> <laughs> educating their friends, their neighbors, their friends' parents and everyone that they could talk to in the supermarket about tar sands and the reality that this was a different oil. This was not the traditional oil that they had seen along their working front, waterfront for so long. <clears throat> it was a new product carrying new threats and new concerns to their community. And to watch them believe that they could make a difference was absolutely overwhelming. The fact is, we live in a society right now where we're all pretty disengaged in this process. We think the political system is broken. We think that there's too much money getting in the way, stopping local citizens from doing the right thing. And the fact is that we have South Portland to thank right now for reminding us that each and every one of us truly can make a difference. This is our future and it's in our hands. It's not in the hands of big oil. Yes, they have their objectives, and their pockets may be a bit deeper, but they don't have their integrity. They hide behind their boardroom doors. They hide behind their big lobbying campaigns. And they won't even tell us what's in tar sands so that we truly know what all the threats are to the various communities throughout our country that are facing this threat. I recently had the pleasure of traveling to Alberta, Canada. Because for me, when I look at the tar sands issue, it's about community to community, all the way up to the extraction area, all the way up to tar sands ground zero. And I went up there to be part of the First Nations healing walk. And as I was flying into Fort McMurray, Alberta, I was overwhelmed by the beauty that I was looking down below at. The boreal forest, the largest intact forest ecosystem on our planet, and water everywhere, beautiful fresh water. And when I got to where the First Nation communities had gathered and were speaking, I remember the first First Nation woman that spoke and the words were, water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. They literally have to truck in their water now into First Nation communities all around the extraction sites. I watched the water trucks go by as I walked with hundreds of First Nation people along the devastation and they were the ones that honked and put their hands out the window to thank us because they know the truth. They're bringing water to the people that now have 
poisoned water. The First Nation people trying to live tribal land that gets polluted. So whether we're talking about tar sands up there in Canada, whether we're talking about the threats that exist in port cities, like here in South Portland, where they have air quality issues to be concerned about, whether we talk about the many communities where tar sands now rolls through on trains that are not safe to carry it, the reality is tar sands is threatening communities throughout our country, throughout our continent. So I want to thank South Portland once again to remind us, for reminding us, <clears throat> that we can truly protect what we love. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Ivy Fernyoka and I'm an attorney with the Conservation Law Foundation. So I'm the last speaker and an attorney. I <laughs> indulge you and ask you to just listen to me for a couple minutes. I'll make this short. We strongly support this ordinance and we strongly support the legal basis for this ordinance for several reasons. The first is that this ordinance was carefully crafted to only limit the bulk loading of crude oil onto vessels. That's a use that's never been done in South Portland and that the oil company says it has no intention of doing. The, the ordinance does not prohibit any existing use. Second, this ordinance is clearly within the city's home rule authority granted by our state constitution to municipalities to protect the health of its citizens and the aesthetics of the community. Third, the city developed an incredibly strong record to support this legitimate basis for the ordinance. It had an open and thorough process that occurred over six months. There were 20 meetings that covered over 60 hours of meeting time. Hundreds of hours were spent reviewing the, the evidence. There were thousands of pages of documents that were reviewed, all to ensure that the way the ordinance was drafted was to protect the health of South Portland's residents and visitors and the aesthetics of the community. So we hope for all of these reasons that the oil company chooses not to challenge the Clear Sky Ordinance. But if they do, the Conservation Law Foundation will be there with the city to vigorously defend the legal bases for these ordinances. Thank you. So, as you've heard, the bottom line is that nobody is above the democratic process when it is really at work. And when out-of-state oil interests come to try and pollute a main town, we know how to say no. And that communities all across Maine, New England, and all across the continent are facing a variety of threats from, south, from tar sands. And so today's uh, celebration of what South Portland residents have done to protect themselves sends a resounding message all across the region and all across the continent that yes it is possible to face down the threats of tar sands oil and yes it is possible to overcome the interests who want to stop at nothing to pursue those those tar sands profits. Thank you all very much for being here. Uh, we're happy to answer some questions um, here at the podium if you have them and of course all of us will stay around for uh, for a little bit afterwards uh, to, to answer questions. So uh, any particular questions for any of our speakers or in general? I have one question. Um, uh, Jamie Pye had said um, in response I have you were talking about being prepared for a legal challenge. He says we'll evaluate all political and legal means available to us to overturn the ordinance. The fight is not over. So political I'm guessing he's thinking about perhaps going back to the people of South Portland for another vote. And how will you be prepared to, to deal with it on that front? I assume that what he's referring to is going back and trying to um, have a citizen referendum and having another vote on the ordinance. And I think that if that happens, you will see the support of all of the people standing yeah. here. And, and I just can't imagine that that would be a successful process politically. Say something about the legal, then MJ can, yes, or please. MJ first, yeah. say something about that. I think that my message to Mr. Pye would be, we're not going away. 
<laughs> and the message that the city council said last night is clearly this is how they want to resolve this and they want to move on. The city council's vote was overwhelming, two, two votes six to one. So I think the city council has indicated very clearly that they think this is the right resolution. They think the process we've gone to to get here is right. And so I think it would be a big mistake to try and, and move the community through a process to undo what we've had so much process to get to. And our planning Have you all heard from any board. other communities around the country that are dealing with tar sands challenges because of the success that you've had? Well, what was the first part of your question? Have you heard from any other communities that are facing tar sands threats because of what you've accomplished here? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, there's folks in Mobile, Alabama that have similar threats. Um, they're getting a lot of um, tar sands coming in by rail and then tank farms are being built right next to a community school. So they are very interested in learning about what we've been doing here to protect our community because they're going to be having similar air quality issues. That's one example. I don't know if others want to give. Um, there's another terrific example um, out in Nebraska. There are a lot of folks up and down the proposed Keystone XL pipeline route um, that fear for their, their own drinking water. There are a lot of ranchers, um, farmers who are worried about the aquifer situation out there. Um, there are a set of landowners in Nebraska that just want a major court case um, that's actually going to delay Keystone for, um, at the time, 18 months. So probably at this point, I don't know, another nine months. Um, so it you know, really is the case that across the country, and across Canada, communities that are impacted by the threat of tar sands are standing up and saying, no, this is not okay. Um, and we have heard from them already and hope to continue to reach out and share what, what's worked here. Um, I, I would just point out that I heard from uh, a reporter for the Montreal Gazette uh, who had gone down through the Quebec part of this pipeline, which goes from Montreal down to the Vermont border at North Troy and interviewed people in the towns along there. And they were thrilled at the news that South Portland had banned the transport of tar sands through that pipeline because they know this is, that part is of uh, Quebec uh, is, has many lakes and streams. It's sort of holiday country and tourism and uh, mountains and skiing and all these wonderful things and all of that would be threatened by any any kind of uh, uh, disruption of the uh, pipeline so they're thrilled at this news questions for the moment okay then thank you very much again for being here and thank you so much all of us for for working together and the citizens of south portland for their tireless efforts thank to you, protect everyone. themselves thank you so portland pipeline originally got permits to reverse the flow and bring tar sands into south portland and that would have necessitated the construction of two 70-foot smokestacks right there at the end of that pier, near Bug Light, the lighthouse. And those smokestacks are for um, volatile, what, what do they do exactly? Uh, they are vapor combustion units. So they are required to burn off the toxic vapors that come from the loading process. And they would have increased air pollution in South Portland. And then the, the um, pipeline comes down through that, that's that. one end of the pipeline and for the past for over 60 years crude oil has been loaded there and sent up to Montreal and the dangerous proposal that we just stopped last night was to reverse it and bring tar sands from Montreal down to this pier to get loaded on